healthier. I build my body to be as strong, healthy, and happy as I possibly can be. I am definitely the happiest and healthiest I've ever been. I feel empowered, I feel capable, and I feel strong. The mindset that I have right now um, is gonna continue forever. I know now what makes me happy and what makes me healthy both physically and mentally, and I plan to continue that for the rest of my life. Build balance, build fulfillment. Build your body, build your life. Bodybuilding.com. The main reason I build my body is to stay healthy. You have one life to live. I feel like fitness is just part of who I am. It's my anchor in life. It's what keeps me grounded. It helps me to stay disciplined. It helps me to stay driven. I also build my body for my people back home, my Samoan people, my Polynesians, the indigenous people. There's a lot of people dying young. There's a lot of people that don't know how to do fitness. You know, I see their struggle, and I don't want my people to struggle. I want them to thrive. My people were athletes, but it's just the mentality that they're in and the norm back home of eating bad and not exercising and not being educated. For me, building my body is being that example so that they could see that there's someone just like them that's making a change. You know, anything is possible instead of just the body that I'm building. I want people to see that that guy works hard. That guy's disciplined. It's building your mind. It's building your character. I'm a lot more confident. I'm more self-disciplined. I'm self-motivated. And I get to be a role model to my people and to everyone around the world, you know, to live an active lifestyle. Build work ethic. Build inspiration. Build your body. Build your life. Bodybuilding.com. I truly believe that everything we do in life is based on our health. And without our health, we're not able to be our best self, the person we can be to care for our family, to be a good friend, to be productive at work. And so I truly take care of myself because I believe it'll make me a better person. I'm very grateful for the opportunities that I've been given, and it keeps me motivated to continue inspiring others. I always tell others, don't get lost in your head so much in how you look. It's, it's not always about how you look, it's about how you feel. And when you find yourself getting stressed or overwhelmed with the thought of looking a certain way, it just it steers you in a different direction and your whole purpose shifts. I feel like being a mother to my daughter is my purpose. There's a reason I started this. And my reason is 11 years old now. She is my everything. She's my inspiration. My daughter approached me one day and just said, Mom, I want to help people like you help people. She was six at the time. And I remember that she's watching me in everything I do. And, and to leave that legacy with her, to live a healthy lifestyle, is to me the most important thing I can give to her and others. When I build my body, I see a person strong enough to take on the world. No matter what is thrown at me, I know I can do it. Yes, I want to look good, but I also want to feel good. It gives you the power to know that you can do all the things you want to do. We've been given a gift. You need to be the best person you can physically, mentally, and socially so that you can be all you can be versus just being one part of who you really should be. You'll be able to do anything you want to do in life, and you should do it. Set an example. Build resilience. Build your body. Build your life. Bodybuilding.com. I'm 
building my body to be able to do things. It's like your body of work, and your body of work is applied to everything you do. It's a tool for me, so if this tool is sharpened and strong, then I'm gonna be able to do things a lot better. It's about really finding the balance where you have a good level of physical fitness, but you're not cheating yourself on the little things that you can enjoy. I want to be able to go out and have a burger with my friends, go out and have a beer, but then not have it impact everything else I'm doing. I don't want to be a grandma that's walking around and having a hard time with bad hips and poor mobility. If I didn't have the level of physical fitness or at least some level of mobility or fitness, I wouldn't be able to do the things I do and I wouldn't enjoy them as much. My mind is more clear. I can actually go to a place where the creativity comes. You know, when I'm walking on the treadmill or when I'm exercising and I'm blasting the music, I get so many thoughts that just come through my head. Everyone wants to be healthy. It's just a matter of whether you're gonna take the steps to get there or not. And it doesn't mean you have to go in a gym, but you need to be active. Build enjoyment, build lifestyle, build your body, build your life, bodybuilding.com. There's a certain mystique when it comes to being a martial artist. Not just being physically strong, but you also have to be mentally strong. Fitness helps to reaffirm all of that. I always say that success is a decision. Every day, you have to decide you're going to be successful. Verbalization turns into expectation. Once you say something, it goes from your mouth, into your ears, into your mind, and your mind controls your actions. Take small steps every single day, because if that day you've done better than you did yesterday, then that day you've been the best you've ever been. From the outside, it looks very difficult. But if you dig deep, it's actually very easy because you're doing the same training, you're eating the same food over and over again. Help build my spirit. You use it to sharpen what you want out of life. Respect, discipline, self-esteem, honesty, joy. Things that translate outside the realm of the weights. All those things make building your body worth it. Build consistency. Build respect. Build your body. Build your life. Bodybuilding.com it feels amazing. You feel like you can overcome anything in life because you already have. You feel confident in yourself. You have nothing to worry about. You're healthy. You're taken care of. Now you can take on the world and go do what you need to do. When I was younger, my dad and I used to always work out together. He was an advocate on playing sports and being active and being healthy. pass unexpectedly, and that was a driving force for me to continue to push myself in fitness. I helped inspire my mom to get into the fitness industry. My sister works out, my brother works out, and I know that there is that underlying, hey, dad's really proud of us, and this is what he wanted, and this is what he kind of bestowed on us. He wanted us to eat healthy, he wanted us to be healthy. I see Everyone's life change when they have fitness become such a big part of their life with their self-esteem, with their confidence. It helps with depression, it helps with anxiety. Everyone should be a part of fitness in one way or another because it has such a positive impact on your life. I build my body for myself and I think that everybody should build their body for themselves. Taking care of your body, inside and out, is gonna make you perform better in the long run. 
feel like you're at your best. You feel like you can function at your best. You know that you can achieve things. You know that you have achieved things and you know that you can overcome things. Build inspiration. Build progress. Build your body. Build your life. Bodybuilding.com I build my body. What's up, guys? This is bodybuilding.com on Twitch, on YouTube, on Facebook. Um, we're here today with a unique challenge, and I have Cassie with me. Um, I am a natural bodybuilding pro, and Cassie, I would say, is a CrossFit pro. Half natty. Half natty. Half natty CrossFit. Sure. Um, <laughs> So today, she has previously killed me on a CrossFit workout. So today, I am going to take her through a bro arm workout that I am excited about. And I'm nervous. We're pulling out all the stops. Like, I got inclusion, occlusion bands here. I've never done occlusion. This is my occlusion band cherry popping experience. There you go. Sure. <laughs> what she said. Anyways. <laughs> So I'm gonna be throwing these on. We're gonna be doing an arm workout. We are going to start with a seated um, external rotation dumbbell curl. Um, question. For people watching from YouTube and Facebook, where can they normally catch you? Yes, yeah, so I am normally on a show called Pro and Bro. Obviously Cassie here isn't a bro. Maybe she is a bro. Like CrossFit bro. bro. CrossFit bro. You can catch us on Twitch. We stream, stream every Wednesday uh, around 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. Um, so obviously we want to pull you guys to enjoy our channel on Twitch where we relate to gaming. Um, you know, we talk about bro things. I'm actually a pro, so I talk about the lifts, the exercises. I want to answer your questions about nutrition and workouts. So feel free even today, you have a bodybuilder and you have a CrossFitter, so shoot us those questions. We're here to answer them for you. But let's go ahead and get a, a warm-up going. They, they could be real questions, they can be real troll questions. questions. Uh, troll Ask questions. us anything. We'll cover also, I have certifications and some things too. Yeah. So I'm go. not an idiot. Yeah, Cassie, give us some you background. Go. Some background? Oh. Uh, hi. I am a games level CrossFit competitor team, team, uh, national level weightlifter for the sport of weightlifting. Yeah. Snatch and clean and jerk, and I have a co two coaching certs in weightlifting and one in CrossFit. Uh, David Pritchard says, "Put your phone down. There's no phones in the gym." Put your phone no, down. The, you know what? I have to answer your questions. Yeah, yeah. How are we on supposed to help you guys? Out Agreed. Too? That's annoying. I won't take any selfies. Yeah. Maybe one. That's uh, my partner Z. That's missing. He's the bro. He's the one with the phone out doing selfies, all that type of stuff. I'm trying to lift. He's talking to me all day. So. They want to know: Are you a nutritionist too, Cassie? Uh, no. Uh, we should talk about that word nutritionist while we're, while we're talking about things. If you're looking for good nutrition advice, look for someone that's written that article or whatever that has RD, a registered dietitian at the end. Nutritionist doesn't really mean anything. So technically I could say I am a nutritionist because there's no real certification attached to that. Uh, so I'm a nutritionist. I'm a nutritionist too. I'm a nutritionist. So is Derek, our camera guy. <laughs> Uh, but we can definitely answer some of your nutrition yeah. questions if you want. It's um, specified to the training. So right. if you have questions about her competing in CrossFit, yep. uh, the things that I changed in my nutrition leading up to a show uh, for physique, that type of a thing, or just everyday muscle gain, weight gain, weight loss, that type of thing, we can help you guys out. Yeah. So. All right. Let's, let's see. throw these back. Boom. And he's going first. Oh, I guess I'm going first. Since I didn't get the memo that you're supposed to cover your arms up before you do arms workout, and then you bust them out later, and he didn't tell me, so I only. No, I think that's probably good. Okay. I don't know. It's supposed to be. Eighty percent. Tight. Eighty percent. Tight. It, it should not hurt. If it hurts, or you feel it doesn't super hurt. Super, super it doesn't hurt. If I pass out. <laughs> okay. Count my reps in case I pass out, so you guys. It should be know. snug though. I have them too. Uh, Stace on Facebook asks, uh, what do you like I should do about really sore elbows? Ooh. Sore elbows. Take some time off, take some ibuprofen. It's, if it's really, really hurting you, go see a doctor. Like if that, it might be some arthritis, it might just be some tendonitis. That just really depends on what you've been doing. 
So go see a PT, go see a doctor, um, go see a, what's a... It could be a structural thing with your form, um, so you might want to check your form on some exercises. If you could give us specifics as to what exercises are causing um, that that pain, maybe we can help you guys out. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, do you want help? No, I think Got I it. Okay. Um, this another man, Islam. Can I ask you about steroids? I don't take them, so I might not be the right person to ask. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't. I don't take steroids. He's a natural well. guy. Natural too, so. uh, bodybuilder, so. Um, this is not the place, definitely, to uh, be answering those type of questions. <clears throat> okay. Are we warming up? Or we're we just starting? warming up. Okay, we're, we're starting. Just warming up. I'll go through the uh, the exercises, the sets, uh, the rest time, all that stuff. But let's just get a nice little warm up right here. <clears throat> um, Sarah on Facebook asks, "What do you think is the best biceps move for a peak?" Ooh, okay. Good question, Sarah. <clears throat> this one actually is great. So by uh, externally rotating when you are doing a bicep curl, um, which is just that motion right there, you are going to be working the short head of your bicep, which also helps with the peak. Um, man, so I, I like concentration curls personally for, for the peak, um, whether that's with a uh, just sitting down with a dumbbell, or it can also be with a cable, just your choice there. But I think concentration curls, also external rotations. Boom. Good question. Huh, this guy says, band occlusion won't grow Andy's little arms. Oh. That's why, that's why I got the shirt before the shirt. I need to get the blood flowing. Or actually trapping the blood with the band. In the shirt. Who's got bigger arms, arms, Andy? The double Matthew. occlusion. We'll see. Just give me, give me two more sets, and then the jacket will come off. Really should put it around his calves. Oh my god. <laughs> I'll stop reading Perfect. these. <laughs> Perfect. Just gonna take that one. I'm a physique it. athlete. I don't got good legs. It's okay. Just zoom in take on the calves and cover your arms. <laughs> Alright, so one more quick warm-up, then we'll get into it. Savage. Okay, Ariel, in your experience in terms of diet. Oh wait, hold on, this is long. What's the most minimalist way to lose body fat and gain muscle? Macro counting is too much for most people. No calorie counting if possible. Maybe just counting protein. That's a really good question. I think you hit the nail on the head of just worrying about your protein. Honestly, the biggest problem with most people and why they have extra body fat is that they just eat too much. So if you're more mindful about your portion sizes, if you're more thoughtful about what you put on your plate and how much is on your plate and how much you're putting in your body, that's going to help you eliminate a lot of extra calories that you're putting, that you're eating. Yeah. And then concentrating on your protein. Like, are you getting, I would aim for 20 to 30 grams of protein every meal and eat five times a day. And then that's really easy. Know your macronutrient count. Know she says that's too hard. Taking. She doesn't want to do that. Then yeah, and you don't have to count your macro. Like, really, count your protein, 20 to 35 grams, 30, well, 20 to 30 grams per meal, and then think about how much you're eating. Like. You don't have to count your calories, but look at it. Are you eating an entire bag of chips? Yeah. Don't do that. Just I guess it. then, if that's the case, learn your, your sources of protein yes. so you know exactly what you're saying, what you are eating throughout the day. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's a good one. Has Andy ever taken diuretics before a show to shed water weight? So water weight um, and shedding water is important before a show. I haven't take, taken diuretics. That wouldn't actually be legal in the division that I compete in. Um, I didn't know that. But there are natural sources of diuretics that you can take. Um, so that's going to be your asparagus. Uh, I eat a lot of asparagus weeks leading into a show to shed water weight. Um, have you ever been on that? You just, she thinks asparagus is funny. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> All right, so 40 reps. Okay, 40 so, reps. To actually get into the workout, we are doing. So I'm taking Cassie here through my current arm day. So, you're no, be you're a liar. He made this up just to be hard, just to mess with me. Maybe a few Season tweaks, <laughs> but some volume tweaks, like these bad boys. <laughs> All right. So you are going to start okay. with seated, seated bicep biceps curl, external rotation out here like this. <clears throat> so she's going to go ahead and pin her elbows to her sides, externally rotate the shoulders, <clears throat> and just do a normal bicep curl. Um, Forty reps, super seated, with skull crushers with that same dumbbell. Yes. Another 40 reps. So this is going to be very high volume today. Okay. 
Uh, Melissa, 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal, not all day, per meal. Uh, how do I build awesome arms like you? Consistency in the gym. You can't just do a workout once a month or twice a week for one year. It's taken a long time for me to look like this, so it like really just put the work in. That's really the best advice I can get. Am I doing this right? Yeah, looks good. Muscle maturity is important. So like she just said, even with me, it's been the, the, the body I've been able to obtain through competing for years and years and even just training hard for years has taken me six years to do. And that's with consistent eating and consistent training. Um, it's a process, process, results don't happen overnight. Um, it, we're, we're in the business, we're bodybuilding.com, we sell supplements to people. But I will admit that supplements will not change you overnight. Making sure that your workouts and your nutrition are on point is going to get the good results that you want. What rep is this? This is 25. 25, you're barely halfway done. Uh, N word on Twitch wants to know if we're doing the Rich Piana eight hour arm workout. Not quite eight hours, close though. Oh my gosh. Feels like eight hours to Cassie. This is the first set. See, this is set number one. Bands are working. <clears throat> there you go. Strict form, there you go. I have to superset this? You have to superset uh, this. Okay. 40? 40. Oh my god. <clears throat> this is the worst. So this is a very volume based work. Die. It's an AMRAP. It is. This is CrossFit at its it core. It is. Except Volume it's just on one reps. joint and it's crazy. <clears throat> the most important joint. <laughs> it is. The arm joint. <laughs> uh, they want to know how heavy those dumbbells are. 10 pounds! 10 pounds. I have the 17s because I'm clearly stronger <laughs> as a bodybuilder. Just kidding. <clears throat> More functional. More functional. Is that what? Yeah. There we go. What do you have? Um, you can look at my phone for Facebook questions if you want. Uh, what about when should they use uh, blood flow restriction bands? <clears throat> Never. <laughs> like in training, like within the workout. Okay, so the, the actual studies behind uh, BFR training, occlusion training, are done with low load. So that's why I actually picked for us to be doing it with lighter weight. So Cassie has 10 pounds, she can probably bicep curls. 60s if she really wants, but this is low load. So what happens is uh, <clears throat> the occlusion training is stopping uh, like venous flow from coming out of the muscle, but you are keeping that arterial flow in. Um, it helps you reach that fatigue point and it helps damage the muscle with low load weight. Um, if you compare this to heavy load weight, there is not a correlation. You should do the heavy load weight. But if you're comparing low load weight to other low load weight with occlusion bands, the occlusion bands are going to be better. So that's when you should train it. <clears throat> and train it when you're also fatigued. You don't have to do it the first lift. You can do it at the end of a workout when you are already fatigued. So you have to do low load training. Low load is like 30%. <clears throat> How'd that feel? It's really bad. Okay. I'm, yeah, Good I'm job. gonna get wrecked too, don't worry. <clears throat> Okay, I'm gonna answer some Facebook questions. Now, Amanda says I suffer from migraines and am limited to some healthy foods being the trigger migraines. Any advice? I do full body workouts. My goal is to gain strength in my arms and legs and glutes. Should I focus one day a week for arms and legs and glutes or full body? Um, I'm not sure if that's a nutrition question or a training question. Um, if you're looking to like put on muscle, um, go heavy, like really, the cool thing about bodybuilding or training in general is that you have to give your body a reason to change. So as long as you're consistent and you're consistently giving your muscles work, they're gonna grow. Um, and as far as healthy foods go, I mean, if you're getting that protein, you're gonna build muscle. As long as you're consistent with, with your protein and you're working out, then you're gonna be fine. And, and really your diet, if they trigger migraine, like don't eat stuff that triggers oh, your migraine. You're still gonna build muscle even if you're not eating. That took you like 
Way less time than it took me. That was very painful, though. I have a question from YouTube. Yeah. Uh, they want to know how do they know how much protein they should eat in a day? How much does Andy eat? In a no, day? how much? No, like, <laughs> the person asking, like, how how, how much should? Yeah, how much should they eat? How in much day? protein should one eat in a day? Or how do they know how much they should? eat? So I, again, I always give the same advice: twenty to thirty grams a day. If you're a big dude, go up to thirty-five. I'm sorry, not grams a day, grams per meal. 20, 30 grams per meal. If you're a big guy, go up to 35. Eat at least five times a day. Sure. You can. I, I go by like one to 1.5 grams. You per, can do that. Yeah, pound of body. Weight. Yeah, you can do that. One pound of pro, one gram, a pound of protein per pound of body weight. Oh. Dang it. Gram that protein question. <laughs> per pound of body weight is another great way to do it. I totally Before. lost count. Well, I wasn't counting for you. <sighs> do extra. What is the rest time? A su on a superset, you don't rest between movements. You go right from one thing to the other. And right now, our rest time is essentially waiting for the other partner to get done. Yep. So keep, I mean, <clears throat> cool thing about uh, working out, should I go up and wait for this next set? Yes. Okay, friends. Now with this set, we're going to do 30. 30. Are you going to stay the same? Of course you should go up. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, when does one know the length of shorts to wear in the gym? Short as possible, <laughs> men and women, in uh, my opinion. Andy didn't get that memo. Andy didn't. <sighs> Mine is how tight to wear your sweatpants <laughs> or your joggers. I don't fit joggers very well. Pants don't fit my legs very well in general. Okay, 30 reps now. With I'm doing 12 and a half. I went up in weight. Good. I don't know how well that's going to go. Good job. Thanks. So that rest time normally, if you're alone, minute and a half to two minutes for this. Um, you could do this without the occlusion bands too, and it will still be a great workout. I love this arm day. Get these bad boys back on. And you got the memo for the shortest joggers ever. <laughs> Are those capris? Joggers need to be as tight as possible. That's the rule and as short as possible. Uh, for new people joining in, where do they find you on a weekly basis? So on a weekly basis, I am on a Twitch episode um, on Wednesdays called Pro, Pro and Bro. If you wanna uh, find us on Instagram, it's gonna be Pro underscore N underscore Bro. Um, we go over gaming, we go over different lifting techniques, different, different lifting workouts, but basically uh, I am an NGA uh, professional bodybuilder. And then uh, my friend here at work is just a normal bro. He's a, he's a pro at being a bro. So we, we just go through that every day. He gives you the take of the normal lifting, and then I kind of take it to that competitor level. And then Cassie is our uh, form expert with all your videos. She's struggling right now. I love it. <laughs> what rep? 12. There you go. Cassie, they want to see a bicep flex after this set. Okay. You see that, that pump in effect. There you go. Cassie, when was the last time you did an arm workout? Probably four years ago. Four years ago. You're killing it then. Do you want it with or without the bands? Whatever you prefer. I need to bump my weight. You bumped your weight. I can't. Take it off so you can see better. We got a nice dumbbell pile going on. So, oh um, yeah, put your weights away. Don't be a d bag. Being the bad friend that I am, this is supposed to be a pyramid. So we're dropping our set or our, our reps. Dropping our reps. Yeah. Because he's nice. <clears throat> okay. What is size of arms? Do you know how big your biceps are? I haven't measured my uh, hair in a while. They look about 350. 350. Maybe 16s. 17s? I'm going to go with 17. Let's go. <clears throat> yeah, 17 inches, mine too. Everything's bigger on TV or on stream. Um, F Lonnie on Facebook asks, after an arm workout, I sometimes get tension at the bicep to where I can't curl or tightening of the forearm. Is this just too much stress or lack of protein? I think that's um, called the pump. 
Uh-oh, here. <laughs> here, bro. Oh, thanks, bro. Yeah. You don't wanna mess up. Yeah. Did it just like, oh. It just straight ripped off. Boom. Too tight? We're doing it live, oh. accidents happen. Okay, can Maybe you use bands on big. your legs? Yes, you can. Use yes. bands on your legs. What is it, like a couple inches above your knee? What's um, a lot high? of people uh, cut it off right bef below the glute level. Okay, right, so right, like, yep. right, her, right below the glute. It's right. Under the cheek. Under the cheek. Getting like that. Right up here. Not, not so much here. Not here or here so much. Right here. Do the bands make your arms feel bigger? They are doing something. <laughs> yes. Make them feel terrible. Technically, it's trapping the blood, so you should get a better pump that way. Uh, guys, trying. I was wondering if it's okay to do an arm workout just the day before you do back or chest day. Uh, I mean, that depends on your chest and back day. Um, I personally wouldn't because um, you're, if you do a lot of pressing and pulling, you're going to use your biceps and triceps. So if you're going to do biceps and triceps, I would do it after your big lifts, like back exercises and then chest exercises are usually like bench press or pull-ups and deadlifts, and those are big lifts, and you got to use all you can for them. But you're, oh, you you're took my band. Nice. Yeah. We're multicolored now. Uh, for me, I guess be careful just because you know you do recruit a lot of bicep work uh, when you're doing a back exercise because it is that pulling motion. So maybe maxing out arms and then maxing out back, your biceps are gonna be more susceptible to injury. Um, so just be careful with what you're doing. So what are we doing? Now we're doing 20 reps? Now we're doing 20 reps. So bump it one last time if you want. If that's a good weight, keep it there. That look. Oh yeah. Could over-tightening the bands cause damage? Yes. Yes, well, I mean, the whole point of uh, <laughs> blood flow restriction training is to cause extra damage in the muscle, so that's what it's doing. But it definitely re recommends you to do like 80% um, tight tightness, um, definitely not a full tourniquet status. Stay away from that. Yeah, and you can order these things online. These are like, are these actual tourniquets? Those are actual tourniquets. Yeah, I think these are actual tourniquets. Um, so you can order them online. Obviously, They're don't use cheap. it for that purpose. They're super cheap. Yeah, 80% tightness. Uh, they want to know her name and where they can find her on Insta. Hold on. 70, 80, 80. My name is Cassie Smith. You can find me on the Instagrams at Cassie, C A S S I E dot A dot Smith. Um, fair, fair warning, there's a lot of pictures of my child, my baby. So if you're into it's that. It's not a bad thing. No, I mean, it's not a bad thing. People at all. Don't, there's, I do put training stuff, but not that much. Do you recommend using bands with heavy weights? No. Use lightweight, which is why we're, and he's got the 20 pounds yep. in each arm. The, the studies actually show um, it being effective with light load yeah. weight, so which is like 30% of your one rep max. Jacob from YouTube wants to know how Cassie's arms are so big if she hasn't done arms in four years. Ooh, that's a good one. Because CrossFit works, <sighs> son. I don't know, I mean like, <laughs> physical activity has an impact on your body no matter what you're doing and like just because I don't do biceps curls doesn't mean I don't use my arms for a lot of other exercises. Um, I think I'm sort of blessed with good genetics so I grow muscle easily so uh, CrossFit works for me really well um, but like I don't know training stimulus works on your muscles really no matter what it is as long as you're consistent and you're going hard and heavy. So, consistency is key. Consistency. Uh, I have a question about supersets. Do you always have to use uh, different muscle groups like biceps and triceps, or can you do a superset with two biceps exercises? It's called a compound set yep. if you do the same muscle group. 
There you go. And yes, you can pick whatever muscle group. Um, there's, there's times that I will do a back and by day and I am super setting or tri setting, adding that third lift in um, a bicep with a back movement. So it's not workout, workouts are free for you to do whatever you want. Yes. It's the cool thing. Um, <clears throat> Nicole, what should I pay attention to when choosing a CrossFit gym? I'll talk to you about this um, after my set because I have a lot to say on the matter. Uh, here, you can read there we go. Should I go up again for um, 10 reps? So, this is a pyramid, so we just got done doing 20 reps. We are now going to build our way back up the pyramid. So you're going to do... 30 again? We're not doing 10? No, going back to 30. we're stopping at 20. It's high volume, so we're going back to 30. Cool. Can't wait. Okay, find my 12s. Alright, is fat loss supplement good for health or black coffee and green tea work? Yes, uh, black coffee and green tea work. Um, if you look at a lot of fat loss supplements, they're going to be stimulant based. Um, stimulants bring out a thermogenic, um, like a, a heart rate elevation, so you gotta think that's gonna burn more calories, more fat that way. Um, black coffee can work, and you do see a lot of green tea as a ingredient in fat loss supplements. That's only 20. Keep going. You're good. Uh, YouTube says CrossFit sucks though. Whoa. CrossFit, apparently it does. It's all about bodybuilding. <laughs> Keep going. Bodybuilding. Full For range when of you form. only want to look athletic. Oh. As you can see, Cassie the CrossFitter here is not going all the way down with her form. What did I get? Her usual CrossFit <laughs> technique. Um, so she could. I'm just kidding, my form is junk. Anyways. My pump's too big. So we did get an elbow injury question earlier. One lift that is very intensive on your elbows is this right here, the skull crusher. Um, the one thing I've noticed you can do is if you, instead of taking it to the forehead and you move the movement behind your head more, it takes off the pressure on your elbows because it's not creating that acute angle. Um, but, to each their own. If you don't have elbow problems, you don't have to do that. <clears throat> so Cash, we also have a question about uh, how did you get into CrossFit? What made you want to pursue the sport? Okay, good question. Uh, if you survive this set. If she can talk after this. This functional training. I'm just so happy, like, she took me through a CrossFit workout. I was on my knees because I just never trained like that. It was extremely difficult, so I hope you're feeling it. You just gotta get her in the arms. Yeah. Um, Arm day. I, let's see. Um, I actually did do bodybuilding for a while. I never competed, but I trained like a bodybuilder. Um, and I think I watched a YouTube video of CrossFit, of CrossFit. I think it was like the 2012 or 13 games. And they basically did, it's called Murph. But it's uh, 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, and a oh sorry, mile run, 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, and 300 air squats, and another mile run, and they did it on the beach, and I was like, holy crap, this is cool, and I think I could be good at it, and I think a lot of it was looking at the women, and uh, they looked like I did. I don't have, I didn't look like Jamie Eason. I I just don't have the build, and I don't have the nutrition drive, I guess, to be a good bodybuilder. <laughs> I can't hack the diet, I just really can't. Um, so, I decided to go with CrossFit. I have a, sorry, go. Oh, you're, you're good. Oh, you're taking Keep a break? Going. Yeah. Oh, you did all 30, good job. Um, <laughs> so that's why, really, I, I, and it's really fun. I really like it and I'm good at it. I was always a, I was a college soccer player and athletically growing up, I was always bigger and faster and stronger than all the other girls, but I wasn't as skilled. So, um, doing a sport where it does take skill like where you can just be athletic and that's what makes you good is good for my ego, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> and then if you're going to look at CrossFit going to a gym, I would say call first, talk to the instructors, um, and I would say make sure you go a couple times. If there's an on-ramp program, do it. Um, if, they just, if you walk in and they just throw you in a class and they kind of ignore you the whole time, don't go to that, don't go to that gym. Um, if you, 
go in and like nobody talks to you, if no one's friendly, if it's just sort of like awkward and you feel weird, don't go to that gym. Um, yeah, that's... I love all the band's questions. Yes. Have we ever done occlusion training? Occlusion? I don't think we have done occlusion. Huh. Something new. I'm a fan. Wow, there's a lot of these. Um, here. Back to Matanz. Boom. Another that, 40. I think that's by some vascularity. In I think it biceps? does. I can see it. It's working. It's working. It's working. There you go. Back to the tens, Cassie. I'm really not psyched about this. Oh, man. I know. Why are you tying off your arms? This is, this is innovation at its finest. No one's seen this. There was a... Uh, there are a few comments about making sure you actually read about this type of training before you do it. I think that is a great way to go about things. Um, I'm in our regulatory department here, so I get the luxury of reading about all these training styles, reading studies about uh, ingredients, and, and knowledge is, is power. Like, know what you're putting in your body, know the type of training that you're doing, read about it, see if the studies are conclusive, that type of thing. Uh, got a question from YouTube. Why is CrossFit so detrimental to your joints? CrossFitters are the ones who get injured the most at the gym. There's absolutely zero science to back that up. So you find me a study that says that, and then I'll have a conversation with you about it. It's not science, it's fail videos. <laughs> you know what? Okay, to be fair, hold on, let me finish this. Says the bro with things around his biceps. So right technically, now. like if you're gonna go post maximal load on a single joint, What's more injurious, going post-maximal load on your bicep, on your elbow joint, post-maximal load on the squat? It's gonna be your elbow joint. So like, calling CrossFit more injurious than bodybuilding is <clears throat> fake and like, not physically think, accurate. Um, would, would you say AMRAP or competing to an extremely high kind of fail rate so is that, going to be worse on your form over time? So that's so, that's with any sport, like, so there's a rate of, there's an injury rate, and as you get more competitive, the injury rate, the risk for injury rate is supposed to grow because you're supposed to get more intense with everything. Technically the most injurious sport out there is running because the hours that it takes for you to be good at running is so much, it's, it's so many hours that the injury rate grows, if that makes sense. So like, I think CrossFit gets a bad reputation because you see A, fail videos and B, like, people doing things that they're not supposed to, but that's like, you can find that at any gym. There's like a billion fail videos of people using machines. So like, you're not gonna walk in across the gym and they're not gonna give you 225 and they're not gonna say, hey, snatch this 225, good yeah. luck. You're gonna start with a PVC pipe. And you're gonna learn technique. Yeah. Uh, what else, what else was I gonna say in defense? Okay, let's get to triceps. Oh yeah. I was, I was actually. That rest time though. Yeah. <laughs> Doing that on purpose. It's okay. CrossFit um, rest time. I mean, I will say that, like, even in bodybuilding, you see guys that call themselves bodybuilders, physique athletes, whatever it is. Um, you're gonna see bad form everywhere. Yeah. Like in the gym, it's just, it's like the, the people that are doing it wrong are always gonna kind of give a bad name for whatever lifting style it is. Um, and there's fail videos for bodybuilders too. So, it's all here at bodybuilding.com. Um, I got the love for CrossFit. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I feel like my, here. my joints hurt all the time. <laughs> yeah, my joints hurt. Take a uh, joint support. There Cross. you go. Um, I will say, in my experience, I think I have... I don't get injured because I did bodybuilding first. And like, my joints are really strong because I worked them at, in this format ever before I did CrossFit. And I think that really helps knowing what muscles to turn on. Like doing a pull-up, knowing how to turn your back muscles on and do a pull-up is a skill. And like, mind-muscle connection is a skill. And sometimes if you throw people in, even in a bodybuilding facility, and you have them do stuff that they're not ready to do, if they don't have the skill, that's more, you're more likely to get injured. Uh, I have one. Uh, what do you, how do you feel about the entry level for somebody becoming a CrossFit? Do you feel it's too easy for somebody to do I think really, quite frankly, like, 
The CrossFit certification process is really not all that different from any other certification process other than like the CSCS, that's a legit one. Get your masters or in your kinesiology or your PhD. Those are legit. Most like certified personal trainers, it's a weekend course maybe or just a test. So like, yes, but I think that across any level of training certification. Woo. Okay, um, it's getting real. <clears throat> Yeah, and so I get that on, on Twitch, what you're saying though. Like, people see kipping pull-ups and they start teaching people how to do them without a properly controlled pull-up first. If you go to a good CrossFit gym and they have you just do kipping pull-ups without learning how to do a good pull-up first, that's not a good gym. Don't go to that gym. Like, there's the same thing, like personal trainers can be bad no matter what situation they're in. Same thing with CrossFit. You can have a bad CrossFit coach, absolutely. And that's, that's part of the uh, actual client looking into the coach and seeing what credentials they have yep. and what experience they have. Yep. Uh, would you say a mix of both CrossFit and bodybuilding would be, a, uh, would be ideal? Um, depends on your goals. Uh, if you're just doing it for like basic health and like just be ready for whatever, for the zombie apocalypse and then yeah if you want to be a physique athlete like andy then like i probably wouldn't prescribe crossfit to you um if you want to be more athletically inclined then i would definitely throw in some crossfit type workouts uh what might be a good way to start is you have like your three big lifts you do your squat you do your bench you do your deadlift um, and then you do your auxiliary, auxiliary movements like these bodybuilding stuff and then throw in um some metcons like box jumps and running or burpees the CrossFit style as you're like conditioning and that would be like a really good way for you to kind of hit everything. And it, I mean I actually implement a lot of CrossFit techniques into my training. Um, I do a lot of AMRAP stuff. I actually do a big three. Um, right now I'm bulking trying to put on some size. Uh, what better way to do that than to do compound movements. So it's not always a single joint. Flex off. Go. <sighs> exercises for me. Um, I do a lot of compound lifts right. um, and I do train to failure, um, timed training to yes. failure as well. Yes. So that's why I can't hate. I do it. Right, we all do it. Just behind um, the facade of a bodybuilder. Uh, let's see. Uh, longest biceps workout. Yep. Yes. Longest. Uh, well, we could go longer. Can you get gains from kipping? No. There's no reason for you to kip unless you're in a CrossFit competition situation and you have to get as many reps as possible in a competition. Then why, not doing then why that, do they do it? Stop doing that because they're competing. Because the point is to get as many reps as possible in a competition sense. Why is CrossFit so expensive? It's <laughs> a really good question. So, part of, there's a lot of CrossFit questions I'm spitting everywhere. It's okay. Um, it's expensive because technically you're getting a personal trainer. Yes, it's a class. But you're getting, you should be getting one-on-one -on -one coaching, really the whole class, or small group coaching. If you get a personal trainer, uh, you're gonna spend that much money. So technically, and then technically, if you're learning the Olympic lifts and learning how to power lift, um, that's some expertise that like maybe a general certified personal trainer wouldn't have. So that's why I think it's expensive. Also, equipment, that good equipment is expensive and you need to pay for it. It's Go. true. What else? Yeah. Specialty, you know, specialty gyms are just more expensive in general. Thank you for Doesn't the compliments, Twitch. Thank you, guys. Twitch look with the love. Twitch with the love. <clears throat> Hell yeah. All right. OK, what are we doing now? OK, we're done with this. Look at this damage. All these dumbbells here. We're done with the inclusion training. We can get this occlusion training. We can get out. Throw these away. I threw them away. All right. Should we put so, these away so we're not? Or should we just, are we going to use them? There's Whatever, not a lot no of people here. in here. We'll, you want to we'll waste leave time? Them. Let's not waste time. Okay. Um, we're going to be doing a bodybuilding lift again. You've heard of 21s. Everybody loves 21s. They associate it with Arnold. 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 <clears throat> so I'm going to take her through some 21s. We are just going to be doing a rope bicep curl. So these are 21s. A lot of people think, um, you know, shoulder shoulder presses. Um, standing bicep curl that type of thing but let's do it with a rope it's a little different you know what i mean oh. hey cassie you're gonna help me move this stuff real quick? yep sure will uh push the card on the table oh we're moving
moving the camera. Oh yeah. It's getting real. So nice little lean back so you can get that full range of motion here. Boom, so we're gonna hit seven reps in the bottom half. What's your cycle? <laughs> seven reps in the top. Alright, and seven full. Uh, can you do these exercises standing up? Yes, you can do these exercises. Well, the ones we were just doing sitting down. Yes, why did we do them sitting down? You know, we actually didn't even have back support. We didn't. So, um, I think it's harder sitting down without back support than standing without back support. So it does give you that little, little extra little element. Um, hard, hardness. Yeah. If you add that back support, it is harder to swing. So, think about that as well. Yeah. Um, I see you doing biceps and triceps. Do you recommend doing both in the same workout or separating them? Boom. When's the last time you trained arms? Three years ago? Four years Four. ago. I guess I'll take that one. No, no, um, no. Oh, yes. I don't know the answer. It really just depends to me. It depends on your training split. There I'm are doing training 21 splits. Reps. 21. 777. Okay. Stop it. Oh, you want me to do half Okay. Yep. I see. Half -sies. So there's times that I'm on a training regimen where I am doing an entire arm day. Um, and then there are times that I'm splitting up triceps with chest or biceps with back. I've done biceps with calves. I've been on pretty much every routine. Um, for me, go to failure, train, train consistently. Those are the two big things. Um, over separating these certain days, these certain days. Follow whatever plan um, is best for you. How's that feel? So good. Boom. But now, I'll bump your weight for you. What's the difference between CrossFit and Olympic lifting? The difference between CrossFit and Olympic lifting. Okay, so Olympic weightlifting is a snatch and a clean and jerk. Two movements. You get uh, three attempts for each movement. The goal is to lift as much in the snatch and as much in the clean and jerk as possible. You combine the totals and then that's your score with your body weight in it is usually how a winner gets selected. CrossFit uses the snatch and clean and jerk in the workouts. Um, CrossFit uses the bench press, the squat, and the deadlift also in the workouts um, to varying degrees of heaviness and reps and whatnot. Ooh. Hope that answers your question. Here, I'll okay. set your weight. 40 now? Let's go cool. 40. Cool. Heart rate's up. This is great. Oh my gosh. Good rest. And yes, these are hammers. These are rope hammers. <laughs> there was a comment uh, asking like, what show I was training for. I actually don't know um, if I'm going to be doing a show this year. Uh, my goal right now is just to put on size. I've gained about 10, 12 pounds since my last one. Um, so just keep going up from there and then uh, try to dial it back down here in the next year or so. Woo. I feel like girls for the girls. Real, real small right now. Yeah? So on, is it they hurt real bad. Do you have CrossFit practice today? I already, I already did it. I already did my CrossFit practice. What does that consist of? Wait, so you're doing this workout already having done a CrossFit workout? Two a day. Um, you know today we did uh, Three sets of four front squats and one jerk, heavy, up to 80%. Um, and then we did some burpees, and then we did a 500 meter row for time. Nice. That was it. It was pretty, pretty good. It was fun. This is my only workout today, <laughs> other than uh, the workout of bringing food to my mouth. Very much. So you're a boy, though. You can like just lift weights and stay skinny. Oh, can I? Or game weight. Cassie, are you playing Destiny 2? <laughs> I'm not a gamer, I'm so sorry. Cassie. I heard it's awesome though. Like every, so at my CrossFit gym, there, there's a large community of gamers and they talk about it a lot, intra, intra like workout. 
And so I heard Destiny 2 is like the absolute shit. That's all I know. I love Destiny 2. Okay. I am a gamer. This is from my Twitch crowd, and hopefully you YouTubers and you uh, Facebook fans can uh, jump on over to Twitch Wednesdays at 2 p.m. for Pro and Bro. Shameless plug. Uh, but I, I love Destiny. I love video games. I nerd out. People think lifting and, and uh, gaming can't go together, but it definitely does. Like, there's no reason why they can't. There is no reason. Nicole asked, will creatine monohydrate negatively affect my weight loss slash fat journey, or should I use HCL creatine? Use monohydrate, use five grams a day, drink a lot of water, it's Boom. not gonna negatively affect anything. Boom. Says a regulatory what? specialist. Yes, what loading phase? What loading phase? You don't phase? need a loading don't phase. Don't load. Don't need a load. Creatine will saturate in your muscle over time, um, even with just the five gram dose. Uh, monohydrate is fine, it's not gonna make you retain water. Like, it's right. these are Five myths. Grams. We had ISSN in here earlier, actually, and uh, I hope you guys were able to watch because these were leading scientists um, at universities that came in and talked about certain things like, is there a uh, gains window? You know, everybody talks about the, all, uh, the uh, anabolic, anabolic window. window. No, you, your muscle protein synthesis happens all the way up until your next workout, 24 hours later. Um, so do you have to take that protein right after? Uh, the science says no. Like these, these guys are super knowledgeable, way more than me, explaining these, kind of debunking these myths. So it, it was awesome having them in there. Oh yeah. A little Questions. bodybuilding mirror check. Question for you two. Uh, if I do slow reps all the time, like a five count negative and positive, so five seconds both ways, uh, is there a downside to that? So eccentric motion? So always training with the slow eccentric yeah. and eccentric. I mean, I train eccentric to switch up my normal training regimen. Um, I do think that there's a such thing as your muscles getting too used to what you're doing and you need to change your training style um, once every two months or so. So then I'll do like an eccentric motion training. Uh, usually not a five second pause on the way down and the way up, but Hey, if that's what's getting your heart rate up and you're going to failure that way, hats off to you. I think that's great. Yeah. Um, Edwin <laughs> said, ma'am, your voice is feminine, but your body is masculine. <laughs> oh, damn. Is, he talk is Edwin talking about me? <laughs> talking about Andy, man? That's mean. <laughs> Edwin, that's savage, bro. I don't know about that. Thanks for commenting on my body. I build it just for you, Edwin. Edwin, oh my god. Bro. Come on, bro. Edwin, just upsetting. Um, do you think CrossFit is similar to supersetting anything and everything? If you mean in terms of uh, keeping your heart rate up, uh, yeah, that's a great way to get um, sort of conditioning as you lift weights. Um, so I guess, yeah, similar in that, keep your heart rate up and get some conditioning as you're lifting. Sure. How much conditioning do you do um, outside of the CrossFit gym? Nothing. None. CrossFit is your conditioning. Yes. Okay. None. There's I nothing. hate running. No one knows I hate hiking. Too. For me? Oh. Oh. Uh, Andy Stetics. A n d y s t h e t i c s. Andy Stetics. Andy Stetics. I'm <laughs> Ka Cassie. Dot a. Dot Smith. Boring. Uh, Cassie. Last, Sandy. Last up. Here, Sandy asked some question about supplements. Sandy. Hello. At the end. I have conflicting information about time and amounts. Time and amounts for supplements. What do you recommend for muscle repair, soreness, growth? I have red creatine, glutamine, BCAAs were the best, but when and how much do you recommend anything else? Oh man, Woo! that's a great question. That's a question. And that is a lot of different supplements and a lot of different time frames. Um, <clears throat> so let's break it down. Muscle repair, um, BCAAs throughout the, the day, you're building blocks of your protein, as well as taking protein any time after your workout, I don't believe in the anabolic window, um, is going to help with re repair. Uh, repair also helps with soreness. Um, man, what do you take for like lactic acid type stuff? Like, I mean, I mean sleep. Yeah, no, truthfully, <laughs> getting eight hours of sleep, sleep great eats, for recovery, like sleep for, great for repair. <laughs> um, growth. So that's where. And this is, uh, we got a lot of questions about like the natural testosterone booster category. 
um, on bodybuilding.com. Um, those naturally increase free testosterone. Um, it's not gonna send it through the roof out of an unnatural level. So that technically can help you with growth. Let's say you're in a lower amount in a natural range. It could maybe boost those natural amounts. Um, muscle repair and rebuilding is growth as well. So that's your proteins. Yeah. Um, Post-workout recovery, that type of thing. Just like protein, really. And like if you're confused about supplements, like just pick, pick protein and just like start with that. And then as you get more comfortable and you learn more about the world and how it will help you, then you can add it in. But for, yeah. if you're confused, I would say protein and- Your, your staples. Yeah. Protein. Go. Creatine. What? For me as the regulatory guy, it's what has the, the studies backing it. Yeah. You talk to me about a product like glutamine, yeah. show me the studies that aren't on burn victims that are actually beneficial for your body. Because there isn't any. Um, show me the studies on protein. There's tons of studies done on protein. 40 grams of protein post-workout is going to increase your muscle protein synthesis. This is proven. Um, creatine, five grams of creatine is gonna help with short-term burst muscle exertion. Like, this is proven. So that's what I, I like to take those things. So. I can't agree more. Who is your favorite crossfitter? My favorite crossfitter uh, for ladies is Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Um, for dudes, Probably like Josh Bridges. Fake. 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 Serious. What about Brad <laughs> Casper? Oh, he's cool. He's British. He's right? cool. All right. We're done with that. Okay. Victoria, thank you. Um, just keep lifting, sister. It'll happen. Keep going. Triceps now? Triceps. So we just did 21s with biceps. Matt Frazier, he's good. Does creatine make you bald or what? Is that like... <laughs> we, we, or empty? Impotent. impotent. Oh, impotent. Oh. No. no. We had the, the <laughs> no. ISS and guys answered that question actually. Did he? There was I maybe no didn't. correlation between merit. Yeah, no I've never even heard that. Baldness. I mean like... Mostly baldness is like DHT levels. That's like all. Um, but there, there really isn't any natural supplement that's gonna mess with that. So, nothing that we sell. <laughs> Venus, I'm not sure what you're asking. What do I think of grenades? Grenade, grenade supplements. Grenade supplements. I don't know. Hey, baby, marry me. I'm already married. Sorry. Okay, so, so let me get out of the way. We just got done doing 21s with a rope uh, hammer curl. So now we're going to use a straight bar here and we are going to do the same motion, 777, 21s with just your normal tricep push down. This is too light. <laughs> Cassie, I want to see you like go to failure. Like, go just, just go ham. super ham. Okay, ham. Okay. So this first motion, you're just going to be going maybe oh, to about right here. In his way. <laughs> He needs to see, there's a mirror over here, and yeah, I don't want to block gotta, his view. The bodybuilder's got to see his tricep. Gym etiquette 101, don't stand in front of someone lifting in the mirror. There's no point out. So then, this bottom motion, probably about right here is that bottom half. Get seven in. And you're probably going to be hitting, you want to ideally hit fatigue with the second set of seven. So that way, that last set of seven is pretty much all you got left. Which, I'm not going to lie, this is too light for me. Still hit it anyways. But this is meant to kill Cassie, so. Um, yes, uh, grenade supplements. I don't know how to answer. I mean, they're fine, I guess. Uh, her arms are amazing. You're just yes. getting compliments, compliments all day. Okay, so start the top part first or the bottom part first? Uh, you're gonna start with the top motion. Perfect. Seven of those. I'm already tired. Dave says he also doesn't believe in the anabolic window. Good job, Dave. Yeah, Dave. You're on the right track, Dave. <laughs> Spread the good word. Venus randomly says, hi, caffeine. I'm a stim junkie. I love caffeine. I'm with I, you. I don't take And caffeine much. does have proven studies as well. Yes, caffeine. I take it in the middle of the day when I'm tired at work. But I don't take it pre-workout because then my heart rate gets too high. This is a little too light. I think that was about seven. Oh, man. 
Uh, here's the cardio question. Cardio or just CrossFit? Just CrossFit. Just CrossFit. Um, if you're, okay, so here's the thing about, I think CrossFit tends to work better for women, because women, I don't know if you knew this, Andy, oh, yeah, but cool. women can actually lift more reps at a higher percentage of their one rep max than men can, because their, mus their muscles are less efficient. So like Andy's true one rep max because he can use more of his, did you know this? No, educate me. He can use more of his body. He has a hormonal profile to use his muscles and his nervous system better than me. So his one rep max is a true one rep max. Mine isn't because I can't, I literally physically can't get to my one rep max. I don't have the hormones to do it. Okay. But I can lift probably 90% of my one rep max for five and Andy could probably only do it for two. So I think for women, for CrossFit, because we have sub-maximal loads for more, for like lots of reps, for because the, the volume is so high, I think that helps women build muscle. Not saying it doesn't work for men. Um, I think another issue with men in CrossFit is that it's an ego thing, and that guys will actually choose lighter weight so they can win the workout, rather than choosing weight that's harder that they might have to go slower to do. Um, so you're saying we're sandbagging? I'm saying that you just want to win. Uh, yeah, kind of, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm very competitive. Right, and you might take yeah. whatever, not do RX, if you know you can move the bar faster, you might choose lower weight so you can win. Would you, would you say, say that um, by working out more often, a female would stimulate maybe those hormones and get them going so that you can perform your yes. one rep max, yes. max better? That gets better with women. Women and men, I mean, you take a beginner and you're, they're gonna get new gains. The first few months can be crazy because your body's learning how to grow muscle. Sure. Um, and yeah, that, that, you can do that with any stimulus, in my opinion. Uh, 70, like yeah? Let's just go 70. Right. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> uh, I went first. And for me to speak a little bit about cardio, I'm of the same theory that if you're actually working out hard enough throughout your lift, um, you don't necessarily need to do the cardio. Um, obviously, if I'm training for a show, that's a different story. Uh, I will do cardio, but it's gonna be mainly be uh, HIT training, um, just to help me, I feel like that helps me preserve as much muscle when I'm at a state where I'm losing it the most. Um, I like HIT over low intensity pretty much any day. But HIT, yeah. HIT some Oh my gosh. Bodybuilding. 70. 70. Oh my gosh. Who's is better? Is that a horseshoe? Better? Side try. I don't know how to do it. What do you do with the leg? You, uh, you, you jam plan. this leg into the other one. You jam it in. Boom, you lock it. It's hard. <laughs> His are better. I'm not an aesthetic athlete. Andy aesthetic. Andy aesthetic. Oh, this is a good question. Um, I think you probably mean trigger points. I'm sure you mean like plateaus. How did you deal with them? Do you ever get trigger points at this point in your physique career? Um, trigger points. Um, maybe that means like maxing out my potential trigger points? I was thinking like a plateau. Like a plateau? Did you uh, mean plateau? Uh, <clears throat> how do you deal Justin? with them? I, tr I change my training style all the time. Um, I go from you know, three minute rest time, no supersets, jump down to a minute rest with supersets. Um, I implement pyramids like I just showed you. Um, just new lifts in general, like I, I don't like doing the same thing. And I, I had a trainer at one point for like two years. I'd go into him and I would tell him, get me a whole new routine, like I'm bored. So for you, that might just be educating yourself with what different lifts there are out there. Yep. Just don't hit those plateaus because they do exist. Yep. <clears throat> Hope that's what you meant. Oh, not. And I'm like, oh. oh. Is that the same person? Oh. Oh, not. So I do get massages. Uh, I'd shoot for like once a month um, for. Do you do massages for CrossFit? Dang, you're missing out. I know. Uh, People are into cupping. <laughs> cupping, cupping, acupuncture. Those type of things, and you know the top level athletes, oh, like yeah. your IFBB pros, your pro CrossFitters yeah. that you see at the CrossFit Games. Yeah. You know they're getting massages like yeah. weekly. Oh, yeah. Like they probably fly out their massage therapist with them to yeah. shows, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
um, because breaking up myofascial tissue and allowing, it's why you stretch before a workout. Um, Except we didn't stretch. A, a tense muscle isn't going to be as good as a nicely refreshed, stretched muscle. Yes, true. So get your massages, and, and I do get a lot of trigger points and hammering into those things with like Braston tools, foam roller, and then a massage therapist, it all helps. Yeah. <clears throat> do we have one more set? Yes. Of these? Let's do this. Let's bop it. Let's um, go. Let's bop it. Twist it. 120. Bop it. Oh, bop it. <laughs> advice for female beginners. My advice for a female beginner would be find a program on bodybuilding.com Follow it as best you can. Um, the 30 day beginner guide is a great one. Um, practice getting in the routine of getting to a gym. Practice getting into the routine of cooking and eating good food for you. Don't go balls out uh, at the beginning. This is a lifestyle change. Go in easy. If you can only just walk into a gym and walk on the treadmill for half an hour, and that's all you want to do, just do that. And slowly and gradually add in things that will help you build a healthier lifestyle. That's my advice. I just bumped you. you. I bumped you 10 pounds. 80. Let's um, go. Big boy weight. Dry new. What's the biggest difference between bodybuilding and CrossFit? CrossFit's awesomer. We have good form. <laughs> And talk to your bros in the gym. Just sit there. Yeah. Just sit. On your phone. And I'm asking. Take a few selfies. Do I think CrossFit is safe for everyone in all age groups? I'm in my 50s and we're about living, lifting heavy weights fast. As a beginner CrossFitter, you're not going to lift heavy weights. You're going to learn how to do it properly before you do it. And yes, it's safe if you have a good coach, if they're having you go easy and they teach you the movements first, absolutely. But again, nice. shop for gyms. So would you like, recommend them going right into CrossFit if you're 50 and you've never done? I would. Yeah, you can totally like do it. I work out with. Oh yeah, I like, work out okay. with 70 year olds. Um, make sure you do their on ramp programs so you understand the movements, how your body's supposed to go, and literally you're not going to do what the class does. You might just do instead of a box jump, you might just do a step up. You're going to do air squats instead of weighted squats. There's like there's lots of scales. CrossFit is infinitely scalable. So you're going to do what you can do at that moment for your workout, and that's why it's safe. Again, you're not going to give you 225 on a bar and tell you to snatch it. It's not going to happen. Yeah, hopefully so you're not. Fine. And if they do, for, then don't go there. Question for Andy. What are your thoughts on time-release capsules as supplements? Man. Time-release? I mean, uh, I think it's a little bit did of, you just of a do fad. 80 or did you choose this for me? I chose 80 for you. So good reps. Uh, man, so time release capsules. You see a lot of supplement companies bragging about either the capsule itself is time release, like eight hour release over time, or there's like something like terabeads beads in it, or there's little beadlets that also extend the release of the capsule. I mean, from a technical standpoint, if you look at pharmaceutical companies, certain drugs um, do have little beads in them and it is meant to make something extended release. Um, the only thing about a supplement company is unless it is like USP certified, um, which is like a pharmacy kind of cert, uh, the GMP processes that this company has or the manufacturing process isn't technically going to mimic like what that drug is doing. So I think it's kind of a fad. And then you also have to think about is this something you actually want time released? Think about ingestion in your stomach. Um, things get ingested sometimes either in the small intestine where it can uh, release whatever nutrients. If it's time released for eight hours, where is it going throughout your body? Just, poop it out. just like the whole like you vitamins, are they getting absorbed arguments? So do your research into the supplement company. Look to see what their verifications are, what their certs are. Um, are they actually pharmaceutical grade or are they not? That was, would be what I would tell you. Here's another good one for you. Oh man. I heard something about DHT levels earlier, but missed any talk on, oh. Yeah, we don't, the DHT talk was just a, uh, 
baldness came up, and so that's kind of a known DHT side effect. Not saying any supplement messes with DHT levels, and we definitely stay away from um, any kind of pro-hormone talk that, because those we cannot sell those whatsoever. No, no, no. Sure. You don't need them. Obvi. 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 Work hard in the gym. <laughs> Lift heavy. Take your multi. All right. We're done. We are done. I hope you guys enjoyed this. So we started with a pyramid, tons of reps for Cassie. So many reps. Took her through a bro bodybuilding workout. We then went to 21s where we did triceps and biceps with the Arnold technique. Um, What'd you think? It was hard. It was awesome. I feel, my arms really feel bigger. Bigger. They probably look bigger. Better. Bigger, bigger is better. Bigger, better, bigger stronger, is better. faster. That's how I don't have your vascularity though. Yeah. No, I'm not getting the... She's do more she took a pre-workout. I'm proud of her for the first time in I did. Four a years. very long time. Okay. There's a little guy. Yeah. I get this like nasty shoulder guy. Dang. My earthworm. Jacked. Okay. So uh, we meshed. We meshed bodybuilding. Molded. CrossFit. We're friends. It happened. We're happy we brought that to y'all. Yes. So as I said earlier, um, you can find me on Pro and Bro, which is a show that we do weekly on Twitch. Um, so tune in there Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Subscribe, um, follow. subscribe, follow, click whatever platform you're on, click that button, and go ahead and give us a like. Yeah. But uh, it's been a good workout. It's been fun. If you want to see me, I do lives every three weeks or so about various uh, big lifts form yeah. what are we doing next tutorials. Week? We're doing core next week, how to properly train your core. Not necessarily six pack talk, Did but. Pick a day yet? Tuesday no. or Thursday, I don't know. Yeah. Check it out. Come back on bodybuilding.com. In the morning. See you cool guys, guys later. Thank you. Have a good one.